Hi, today we're going to talk about a magical process that we use to keep the talent profile up to date based on employee central changes. This is known as HRS Sync. Uh, we will dive into it right now. Okay, the process I'm going to show you now is one that's really important. It happens in every Employee Central implement implementation, but it's just not something that we discuss really all that fully because it just kind of happens behind the scenes. So it, um, what happens is uh, a lot of times the uh, client ends up not having the knowledge on how this process works. So I'm gonna try to rectify that now. Uh, so I've got a quick diagram that I want to show you. Uh, first thing uh, I want to talk about is your talent profile. So the talent profile um, is something that existed long before Employee Central ever came along. Um, this is the employee data that um, exists to support talent modules. And so by talent modules, that could be performance and goals, it could be succession, uh, you name it. Uh, this is what the talent profile uh, is there for. It was around long before Employee Central. Um, it is also not effective data. It's really simple and it's and it's really there specifically to make sure that uh, when you're looking at an employee's record for performance, you've got their first name and last name. That's what the talent profile is for. And, and of course, we expand on the talent profile and it includes things that isn't in Employee Central. Things like uh, work experience and, uh, and, and education and, and um, you know accomplishments and all those different background port lists that we have. So that's the talent profile that exists at every company. Um, but of course, uh, with, with Employee Central, what happens is we have a new source of data. We have a, a Employee Central data. So uh, if before the talent profile system had first name and last name, well, guess what? We have that now in Employee Central as well. Um, and the data that we have in Employee Central is more detailed and, uh, and also is effective data. So uh, the rich data is on the Employee Central side. So we've got to do something to keep these two sources of data in sync. And um, one thing to keep in mind here is that uh, because uh, Employee Central is the system of record now for all of this data, this is the new primary. This is what will drive um, what shows up in Talent Profile. Ta talent Profile is the secondary in this case. So with that, how do we get these things to, to stay in sync? Well, the first, there are really there's two ways that this happens. Both of them really are um, uh, integral to the process. The first is a real-time sync. So a real-time sync happens every time you uh, touch a portlet that has uh, data that needs to be synchronized um, and that needs to be kept in sync with the talent profile. So that is the real-time sync. So anytime you go in to, for example, personal information and you change someone's last name, um, you, you press save, there's a real-time sync that should automatically, instantly update the talent profile. But uh, in addition to that real-time sync, we also have to think about the fact that uh, Employee Central data is effective dated while the talent profile is not effective dated. So let's take another example. Let's say that we had a promotion, uh, and, but that promotion is not going to be effective uh, for another couple of weeks. Well, um, the, it, once that uh, pro promotion becomes effective, then the job title on the employee's talent profile should change. It should no longer be Accountant 1, it should be Accountant 2. Um, but you don't want to do that too early. So we can't just do a real-time sync and just push that over uh, from uh, Employee Central to Talent Profile. So instead, there is also a process that is, uh, and this is really officially known as the HRS sync process. This is a background job that runs uh, uh, typically overnight and is basically going, uh, going to say, have there been any new changes that are now effective today that were not effective yesterday? And if there are, then it's going to take the data and just push it through specifically on that day. So that keeps the effective data data, uh, data inside of Employee Central uh, in sync with the talent profile, which again is an effective data, and it should just reflect whatever is current for today. So what we're going to do um, now is we're about to go in and we're going to uh, uh, do some examples and do some demos of this. But before I do that, uh, I, I do want to um, uh, tell you some good news, and that is a lot of this work's already done for you. It's done automatically out of, out of the box. 
Um, there is um, a KBA, and I'm and I'm going to write it on the screen right now so that you can see uh, see that number. But this is the the key KBA that has the listing of all of the uh, hard coded HRS sync fields that get uh, synchronized. So you can see the listing, um, and you can see, uh, for example, that you're that uh, if uh, you know if you have last name in your system, and you do, then you don't have to do any kind of uh, setup or, or specific mapping for that it automatically will will synchronize that one as well uh, already but there are you know we can expand beyond just the hard-coded settings and so that's the, that's uh, another piece of this is uh, there's some flexibility to the process so uh, enough diagrams and enough talking let's go in and actually look at this in the system okay so we want to show how the synchronization works out of the box so we're in Dwight Schrute's profile here, and you'll notice that he has a header at the top and it's got some uh, key information on there. Um, but one thing that is not showing right now is the cell phone. Um, and actually, we do have the cell phone enabled um, uh, on his profile, but it's just not populated. And where is it not populated? It's not populated in Employee Central. So we're gonna rectify that now. We're going to add a, a cell phone to Dwight's record and um, we will then see that the uh, cell phone is going to automatically appear on him on his org chart. I mean, on the uh, a public profile up here. So I'm going to go down here to the contact information. And I am going to add a mobile number here. And this is one of those hard-coded mappings that I talked about, which is um, the phone type here, while it's mobile, the external code is set to C, and uh, whatever external code, um, excuse me, whatever number uh, is assigned with external code C on the phone type, that one is automatically synchronized to the cell phone uh, 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 field inside of uh, the uh, talent profile. So this is something you don't even have to do any configuration on. So once I put this in and then I hit refresh, you will see voila that the cell phone uh, does appear. So that is uh, for the pre-delivered synchronizations. Uh, that's just how simple uh, these are. Uh, so in our next scenario, let's take this a, a step further and let's show uh, how we can extend this functionality by adding new fields that we can synchronize uh, between Employee Central and uh, the employee profile. Okay. Time for us to show a uh, how we can have a customer specific mapping. In our example here, we're going to have um, uh, the EC job local job title uh, to synchronize to a custom field on the talent profile. So we're going to uh, walk through those steps and show how easy this is. So first, we need to do a little bit of work in managed business configuration. So for starters, we're going to go in and we are going to uh, create a new, uh, where we're going to use one of the existing custom fields, which is custom 02, and we're going to label this uh, local job title so that the local job title now appears on uh, the talent profile. All right, next up, we are going to um, enable the local job title field on the um, uh, job information section in Employee Central. So we're gonna set this to yes. And next, of course, uh, comes the all important part of mapping. So you can see here we have the HRIS mapping section, and this is where the magic happens. So we are going to go in and we're going to map the local job title field uh, to the new custom field that we have set up, uh, which will be listed here as the local job title. And it's just that easy uh, to uh, create the specific mapping. Okay, so all that is left here is we're going to do a quick demo of this show you um, uh, that it works yeah so we scroll down and we're going to add the local job title we're going to populate that field for arthur smith
And now we're going to go to the BizX profile that we already have set up, and you'll see that the local title did get populated. The last thing we're going to talk about in this video is this arrow right here that I described earlier. It is the HRIS sync job. Um, what this job does is it takes any change that when the change was made in Employee Central was effective in the future. So let's say that we had a, a promotion that was going to take place in two weeks uh, and you're going from an account at one to account at two. Um, of course, on the day that the uh, transaction was entered into the system, that change should not be seen on the talent profile because technically that person is has not been promoted yet. Um, instead, there is a job, HRS Sync, that runs, and it, and it typically runs overnight, and um, that will take the information from Employee Central, any future dated information um, that uh, now uh, has become present day information, and will sync it to the talent profile. Um, this job, oh, how do we set it up? Uh, it is set up in provisioning. So um, I'm sure if you're a customer, you're well aware of the fact that you cannot uh, uh, go into provisioning for yourself. So um, that kind of leaves you at the mercy of either uh, having someone in um, uh, uh, from SAP uh, or Success Factors do it or have a, a consultant do it for you. But never fear, there is actually a, at least something you can do to verify that the HRS sync job is set up. And that is here. This is the scheduled job manager. So you just type in scheduled job manager in the search field and you will come to this screen. Uh, this uh, tells you all of the jobs that are running behind the scenes in provisioning. And um, you'll see here that I've pulled up the HRS sync job. Um, and this is the job that runs overnight. And if you click on this, you can see that we have this running daily at 1 a.m. So this is just right after you cross midnight, this job is running to make sure that the system is showing the correct effective date. So um, homework for you if you are a customer and you're unsure about whether this job has been set up, then you can go to Schedule Job uh, Manager and you can go look for a job name, HRS Sync, and, and really strictly speaking, you need to look for a, a job type of HRS Sync, just making sure that that is set up in your system. If it is not, uh, you should be able to put in a ticket with success factors and uh, have them uh, uh, set this up for you. So that's you know that's the, probably the last thing that you really need to think about when it comes to HRS Sync. Hope this video has, has done some good for you. Uh, if you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe to the channel, and I'll be cranking out more videos soon. Thanks a lot.